So at the completion of this lesson, the paramedic refresher student should be able to relate mechanism of injury to potential injuries of the head, um, relate the airway emergency medical care techniques to the patient with the suspected brain injury, and establish the relationship between airway management and patients with head injuries. State the circumstances when the, uh, when the helmet should be left on the patient. Also discuss the circumstances when the helmet should be removed. Identify the different types of helmets. Describe the unique characteristics of sports helmets. Explain the preferred method to remove the helmet. Also discuss the alternative methods for removal of a helmet. Describe how the patient's head is stabilized to remove the helmet. And also differentiate how the head is stabilized with the helmet compared to without the helmet. At the completion of this lesson, the paramedic refresher student will be able to um, def um, defend the reason for leaving the helmet in place for, uh, for transport and also removing the helmet for transport. Um, so this is, we're going to talk about brain herniation. So injuries um, to that to the head um, are extremely serious and may result in a severe permanent disability or death um, if improperly treated or missed. Um, in assessment. So for every patient who is involved in any type of traumatic incident in which the mechanism of injury or and or signs symptoms indicates a possible head injury, complete spinal immobilization must be considered. Um, a short backboard or spine immobilization device may be used um, on non-critically injured patients at the scene prior to movement of the patient. All right, so head injuries are usually the leading cause of death um, in, among accident victims younger than the age 44. Each year, 50,000 people die from a traumatic brain injury. Each year, 1.5 million people incur a head injury. Remember that the central nervous system and head trauma uh, are the primary um, The injury is only the beginning. All right, so here's some facts about the brain. The brain is very is very oxygen dependent and has very limited oxygen storing capacities. Blood blood uh, loss of blood flow to the for five to ten seconds causes can cause unconsciousness. Um, low PaCO2 causes vasodilation and high PaCO2 causes vasoconstriction. The neurons in the brain are among the most sensitive cells of the body. Um, they have very little reserves uh, to fall back on. Uh, a lot of time, the only thing that they really use is going to be O2 and glucose. The intracranial swelling from the injury causes a change or a rise in the intracranial pressure. Due to the brain's um, ability to dilate, constrict vessels within the brain to accommodate those changes, uh, the um, Auto regulation, it auto regulates itself, uh, will lead to ischemia and cellular death. Their neurons will not replace or cannot re repair themselves at, as the pressure continues to rise within the skull. It is, it will displace the brain away from the expanding mass. The movement of the of the compress, um, compressible brain tissue against the rigid skull into the rugged anatomical space caused more injury and bleeding to the brain. Small <coughs> bridging blood vessels are torn and brain tissue is usually bruised. Um, so tentorial, so there's, there's three primary herniations um, syndromes. One was tentorial herniation, which is going to be a uh, uncall. Then you have central um, tentorial herniation, and then you have a sub uh, um herniation. So the tentorial herniation. Um, this is an injury uh, uh, to the lateral side of the brain that causes a shift laterally of the brain tissue. The lateral shift will begin to push the brain backwards towards the all right, so here's a illustration of the uh, of the tentorial um, herniation. As you're seeing, it's sitting there pushing it from, uh, from the lateral side onwards. All right, so the central tentorial herniation. So this is caused when the le uh, where a lesion or an injury to the brain is in the midline. The pressure created by the lesion pushes the membrane 
um, and the um, the diacephalon um, downwards and back towards the foramen um, ov ovicle. So as you see right here, you got a normal position. As you see here, what the herniation is, it's sitting there. As you see here, it's starting to shift the brain into the foramen. All right, so the sub um herniation. So this is an early form of lateral herniation when the midline of the brain is pushed laterally under other structures of the brain. So here's a picture of this herniation. As you see here, it's coming from the lateral side and it's starting to push around the tissue into underlying teals. Uh, where you see the number one, it's sitting there pushing that down into the um, downwards three, it's making it go around the, um, oh, what is that thing called? Um, all right, so forms of brain injuries. So you got, you got concussions. This is usually a mild form of diffuse agonal um, injury. Um, usually has, uh, these people usually have a full recovery. So then you have a diffuse agonal ish, um, um, oxonal injury, sorry, diffuse ox, oxonal injuries. So this occurs in about 50% of all cases of severe um, head injuries, more than those of the patients with a DAI. All right, so, um, okay, so that's what the, so diffuse a, um, axonal injury is the DAI, okay. And, and they usually never regain consciousness. Um, injuries is not uh, confined to a focal area, but rather the entire brain. Then you have contusion. This is, this is a bruise on the brain and or within the brain tissue. Then you have an epidural hematoma. This is um, the accumulation of blood between the dura and the skull caused by a laceration, lacerated artery which is, which, uh, is profuse and rapid. So here's you a illustration of the epidural hematoma. Uh, subdural hematoma. This is usually acute chronic bleeding between the dura and the matter of the uh, of the brain. Um, usually the subarachnoid um, uh, in the uh, the subarachnoid minges. Uh, did you have the subarachnoid hemorrhage, which is the intracranial bleeding between the arachnoid matter and the pia? Then you have the cerebral um, um, cer hematomas, which is bleeding inside the brain. And then you have uh, the penetrating brain, brain trauma, which is penetrating into the cranial vault from trauma. Subdural hematoma, so as you see there, uh, you usually have a uh, torn uh, cerebral vein, um, and a hematoma develops between the subduro and the dura ma uh, matter. Or sorry, uh, from the uh, sub uh, from the dural and the dura uh, subduro and the and dura matter. Then we have the subarachnoid hemorrhage. This is uh, usually comes from. Um, a bleeding um, right here that shows a picture of an aneurysm in the artery that starts that develops in the arachnoid or sorry not the arachnoid the subarachnoid space um, between the arachnoid membrane and the pia matter. Here's your interest uh, cerebral um, hemorrhage. So as you see here, it's, it's a bleeding that, that f forms deep inside the brain. And then we have, okay, so forms of brain injury. So if the injury is penetrating injury, like a GSW knife wound penetrating objects, the injury tends to present um, initially as a focal with a uh, identifiable focus. Uh, if the injury is caused by deceleration or acceleration, the injury tends to be diffused with more of a global symptoms and signs and symptoms, or sorry, sir, global signs and symptoms. So your assessment should be checking presentation, um, presenting an ongoing level of consciousness. So here, vital signs, ABCs, C, um, use C-spine precautions, watch vital signs for irregularities, 
and also we'll look for signs of Cushing, um, Cushing's reflex. Watch for abnormal signs like posturing. Um, look for abnormal pupillary uh, reactions may be the first signs of increased ICP. Check for check the CNS or CSF. Um, look for signs of cranial nerve involvement. Check bilateral sh uh, strengths for muscle groups. All right, so airway. So you may want to do a uh, use a neuromuscular blocking agent for combative patients' surgical airways with massive facial trauma. Ventilate or assist ventilations to maintain an O2 sets at 94 to 95 percent. Hyperventilate um, is contraindicated. It can actually make your ICP levels worse. Uh, try to get a good history in this patient. Uh, is the patient having amnesia or maybe even retrograde amnesia? I, uh, monitor vital signs every five minutes. Look for signs of um, I, rising ICP, like Cushing's triad. Watch for respiratory patterns like chain Stokes respirations, um, ataxic respirations, um, or central ner um, ner neurogenic hyperventilation. Um, you may want to look at um, administering certain medications um, like mannitol, benzodiazepines for seizures, and also RSI medications. Transport to the closest of, of, of appropriate facility. Watch for scene, uh, watch, um, scene times and also do all your ALS in route.